So now let's uh, actually measure something else. So uh, we're going to build a list. And the way we're going to build a list is we're going to take a range that, that goes from 0 up to n minus 1. And then we're going to convert that to a list. So this will return a new list. This is going to be our setup. So we're defining our setup inside of a method. And then this is what we're going to time. We're going to time how long does it take to access an item in the list. And when you do timings like this with large structures, uh, you want to ask yourself, well, is this faster if I access the beginning of the list or the end of the list or the middle of the list? So to get an average or at least capture what is the slowest one, we're actually going to access uh, starting at zero, halfway through the list, and the end of the list. So it'll be timing these three things. We set up a timer that uh, this way. So we say access will be passed a list. So it's going to measure. It's going to do these three things on this list. And then the setup builds the list. So it says list one is equal to build list n, and we pass it the value n. And the n right here is defined as 100. So everything looks for good. Uh, we say times. So we capture the times and we say repeat it 25 times and just run access once. So, But we're going to see there's a little problem here. So let me run it. Let me explain the problem. And what it happens is it says name error, the name build list is not defined. And it actually happens inside of time it. So the problem here is that time it knows nothing about the definition of build list. What time it does is it builds its own environment and it doesn't have access to anything you've defined in your file. So it doesn't have access to n or access or build list. So you have to make those available. So if we look at the statements we're asking it to do, uh, we're asking it to access n and build list and access from this file. L1, because it's in these strings, it's going to execute this statement inside of timeit. So L1 is actually going to be defined inside of timeit, so that one will not be a problem. And because it's defined here, it's also going to be defined when it goes to actually do the timing. But we do have to make these other uh, definitions of access, build list, and n all available to the timeit module. So normally if you want to make something available to another module, it's kind of like what we're doing up here. You do an import statement or you do another form where you want to make the, the, the actual methods available. So we're going to show you uh, different ways you could do it. You could do it by saying import and you could give it this file name. So we're in time it uh, underscore code two dot so uh, or actually semicolon. So that would do it would import this file and uh, that would make all the variables associated with it. But the problem if you do that, then everywhere you refer to uh, a variable, you'd have to preface it with this. You'd have to say time at code dot access or time at code dot build list or time at code dot n. Uh, so we're going to use another format, uh, which is this format. We're going to say from and the other thing, the problem is we can't use this file name because Timeit has no idea where to find the file. In fact, whenever you do an import statement, it searches a path, a list of paths, uh, much like in Windows or Mac when you execute a program, it has to be on a list of paths. And uh, where we're working isn't on that path. So there's actually a shortcut for the current file that started your program, and that's called main. So underscore underscore main. So we're going to say from main import uh, access uh, build list and access in. So we're saying from the main file that started this program, uh, import the, just these th uh, three symbols. So now when it, I ac refer to them in, in, in when these strings are passed over to time it, it's going to know where to find the definition of these symbols for access, for n, and for build list. So now let's run it. And you'll see it runs correctly. 
And uh, so we have some slides that talk about that. So let me switch to those. So first of all, a module is basically a file. So it's a, a module is a group of code uh, that's all grouped together. And so all the symbols that define it are part of that module. And it has code, it can have classes, it can have constants. And basically all the symbols in a file uh, define what's called a namespace. Uh, if, and there's also a way that you can make a lot of files and combine them into one file. And uh, you can look up in Python how to do that. But that's how modules are formed. And imports, uh, the whole idea of import is to import a module. So think of importing another file. Normally when you say import, the file has to be on the path. So if you use an external library like Pythons, which we will do in this class, you have to move the Pythons uh, file or folder into somewhere where that path is. And you actually move it in the Python 3.4 folder on Windows is a good place because it searches that first. Um, so DIR, there's actually a, 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 a method you can call where you just say method with no parentheses and it will print out all these symbols that are currently defined. And that's called your namespace. Uh, you can do import file name. And when you say import and you specify a module by its file name, it makes all those symbols available to you. But you can only use them if you preface the symbol with the name of the module or file name. So that's the example when we're using time it. We're saying we're importing time it. And then we're saying time it dot timer. So any name that's defined as part of the time it module, you have to say time it dot that name. So, and that gets kind of long sometimes. So they give you another way of doing this. So the other way to do this, you use this statement. You say from the module name. So it's going to go to that module or file. And then you say import and you list which names you're going to use in your module. So that only imports those names, but when you use them, you don't have to preface it with the module name, dot. Uh, so if you said import uh, uh, time it, from time it import timer, you could then just directly refer to timer. So you could make a new timer object by just doing this. And that's the form that uh, is usually used by Python programmers because it doesn't uh, it only it very clearly identifies at the top of your program which parts of that module you're going to use, which is kind of self-documenting. Uh, so in this one, we're saying import time it, and so we have time it timer, and uh, we've added this import statement from main import access build list n, and then we have uh, we t since we're doing th uh, three things here. We divide by three to get the average time uh, of actually one access or one index into the list. And so it, it gets that, uh, this is creating a, uh, a list of all the x in times, but it's dividing it by three. So we're making a new list that's dividing everything by three. So this is a tricky line you want to look at. It's very useful. Anytime you have an, one list and you want to modify every item in it, you can use this list comprehension to do it, where you have the formula for the modification here. And then it prints for all the t's and seconds, it prints the time. And then it gets the best time. There's a special function that works on list. You say min, and you give it uh, a sequence and it finds the smallest number in the sequence and returns it. Uh, so when you run this, you get these numbers here. And then it's going to tell you the smallest number, the best time. You can see it's a very small number. Uh, I actually printed this with a different number of decimal places. So this is 8 and this is 10. To actually make it look a little better, I'll print it the same way because it looks very different from our runs. So you can see this number, now you can actually find that number in the list. There it is, the 4310. So that's the fastest time. So that's also the most accurate time. Let me point that out. 